All right, all right. Welcome back to another fun, riveting, exciting, filled lesson in algebra. Uh, chapter 8, section 2, stem and leaf plots. All right, stem and leaf plots. You've seen some of these before. We're going to add in a little bit of information that you might not have seen. Okay, so in a stem and leaf plot, we've got numerical data. They're listed in ascending or descending order, and you'll see today why it's descending. Now, it says the greatest place values, it's important that you note that the, this is plural, values of the data are used for the stems. The least place value, that's only the last place. Least place value forms the leaves. All right, so only the last place. I think this is a little more confusing. Important information here is the least place value goes in the leaves. Everything else goes in the stem. All right, so here's an example of a stem and leaf plot. Okay, notice here we have all the data, and down here, very important, is a key. Every stem and leaf plot has to include a key. The key tells you how to read the stem and leaf plot. So 2 slash 3 means 23. It could mean 2.3 or whatever else the key might suggest. So in this case, it's 23, and what is it? 23 wins. So now I know how to interpret this data. So I know 5 and 0 is 50 wins. Now notice that there's a 0 here and another 0. That doesn't make 500. That's a 50, and there's another 50. So that was maybe a different season that also had 50 wins in that season. Okay, so if you've got repeated data, you have to write that number several times. Okay, now this is something you've already seen before, something you probably haven't, is the back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. Okay, this is an example here of a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. For back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot, you can compare two sets of data. For example, different weather patterns in different places. Okay, or here we have an example of um, scores for two different teams, right? If you look at these scores, you'll notice that for the Thunder, most of the scores are in this area. They're kind of bunched together. We call this a cluster, okay? And then for the Bulls, they're kind of spread out, and then we have a gap right here, and we have lower scores. So overall, if you look at this, you can just visually already notice that the Thunder are the higher scoring team. Right, they have the highest score, and this key again tells us how to read this. 9 slash 5 means 95 points. Now, 11 slash 0 would be 110 points. So there you can see why I said only the least place value goes in the leaves. Everything else goes in the stem. So if you're over 100, then you would have to have a two-digit number in the stem. If you are in, if you have a number less than ten, you'd have to have a zero for the stem. Very important that you write down all these little boxes because that's important information. This is where I see mistakes happen. You start with the smallest value. You don't always start at zero. Okay, so there wasn't a game where the goals, where the Bulls scored only five points. All right, their lowest scoring game was seventy-eight. Notice that this is not 87. If we look at the key here, 8 slash 7 is read as 78. So their lowest scoring uh, game was 78 points. Even if there are no values, you must include the stem. So neither team had any game where they finished in the 80s. Okay, But you have to have the 8 in there. You can't just skip over and go straight to the 9. All right, and then the key has to be there in a back-to-back -back for both sides. All right, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is interpreting data. So here we have an example of a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. Interpreting the data, uh, sometimes we can just visually look at it, and, and we notice here that there is a cluster. Most of these scores are on the lower end, whereas these are spread out all the way from here all the way down there. All right, so um, this has a greater range right here. We can already see that just visually. 
Okay. Um, questions about this. Oh, that's not what we wanted to click. There we go. In general, which city has the lower amount of monthly snowfall? Okay, so we had a look at this, and just visually we can already see. This right here is zero. According to this, that means zero, one, that's one inch. Okay, so this is the smaller snowfall. Here's the highest snowfall at 40 inches. So overall, we can see Buffalo has the lower amount of snowfall because the scores are clustered together in the lower end. Okay, um, and it does not, the greatest amount of snowfall is 27, does not have anything above that, where Syracuse has snowfall of in the 30s and even 40 inches. Which city has more varied amounts? This is a word you're going to have to look for. Varied means that they have small, medium, and large. So vary, it varies. Okay. Most of these are lower for Buffalo. For Syracuse, they have some low scores, but then they also have a very large score and pretty much everything in between. So it has varied snowfall. You might experience just an inch or four inches, but it can get up to 40 inches there too. So the way they describe it, say the data for Syracuse is more spread out, while for Buffalo, it's more clustered. So because we can see this is spread out, therefore it has a more varied amount of snowfall. That's interpreting a stem and leaf plot or even a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. And that's all I have for you in this lesson. Pretty easy lesson. Good times in the matherhood. Check back again for another fun lesson in algebra.